Welcome to the Mass for Inspiration. Welcome to the Mass for Inspiration. Uh, Our Mass today is the first Sunday of Lent. When he calls on me, I will answer him. I will deliver him and give him glory. I will grant him length of days. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit brings us together today as we begin this 40-day season of Lent. Life is full of temptations, and we are especially aware of them during Lent. We are tempted to do things we find desirable, even when we know they're wrong. We are tempted to avoid things that are undesirable, even when we know they're the right thing to do. Today, we hear the serpent successfully tempt Adam and Eve, and the devil unsuccessfully tempt Jesus. May the Holy Spirit, who accompanied Jesus in the desert and accompanies us wherever we go, give us the strength to resist temptations. And now with sorrow, let us call to mind our past sins. Lord Jesus, you are the source of strength to resist temptation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the eternal sign of the Father's merciful love. Christ have mercy. Christ Christ have have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way that leads to eternal life. Lord have mercy. Lord Lord, have have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observance of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God formed man out of the clay of the ground and blew into his nostrils the breath of life, and so man became a living being. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden, in the east, and placed there the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground, the Lord God made various trees grow that were delightful to look at and good for food, with the tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the animals that the Lord God had made. The serpent asked the woman, Did God really tell you not to eat from any of the trees in the garden? The woman answered the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. It's only about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden that God said, You should not eat it or even touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You certainly will not die. No, God knows well that the moment you eat of it, Your eyes will be opened, and you will be like gods who know what is good and what is evil. The woman saw the tree that was good for food, pleasing to the eyes, and desirable for gaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together, and made loincloths for themselves. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. Merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. 
A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain in me. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin death, and thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who died did not sin, after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression, for if by the transgression of one the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? And the gift is not like the result of one who sinned, for after one sin there was the judgment that brought condemnation. But the gift, after many transgressions, brought acquittal. For if by the transgression of the one, death came to reign through that one, how much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of justification come to reign in life through the one Jesus Christ? In conclusion, just as through one transgression, condemnation came upon all, so through one righteous act, acquittal and life came to all. For just as though the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so through the obedience of the one, the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, to O Lord. Lord. At that time, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was hungry. The tempter approached and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become loaves of bread. He said in reply, It is written, One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and made him stand on the parapet of the temple. He said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it's written, He will command his angels concerning you and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Then the devil took him up to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their magnificence. And he said to him, All these I shall give to you if you will prostrate yourself and worship me. At this, Jesus said to him, Get away, Satan. It is written, The Lord your God shall you worship, and him alone shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, today's Gospel from Matthew, which is generally referred to as the temptation narrative, is one which has attracted a good deal of attention from scripture scholars. The temptation narratives 
of Matthew and Luke are presented in detail. We have three temptations in each, while the Gospel of Mark merely alludes to Jesus being tempted in the desert. It's just two verses. The traditional title, Temptation of Jesus, is in a way misleading, since uh, we normally interpret temptation as an enticement to commit sin. The Greek is better translated testing and reflects the Old Testament theme of the testing of righteous people, such as Job, the suffering servant of Isaiah, and people like this. Trial or testing enables good people who undergo undeserved suffering to see in Jesus one who is compassionate and one who has also suffered himself unjustly. While Mark has the simple statement that Jesus was tested 40 days in the wilderness by Satan, Matthew, from which we read today, and Luke have dramatic descriptions of the temptations of Jesus. Temptations, or more accurately, testings in the case of Jesus, are basically internal struggles rather than external events. To convey Jesus' internal struggles, Matthew dramatizes them into a dialogue between Jesus and the tempter. Matthew was Jewish and wrote his gospel primarily for a Jewish audience. He deliberately patterns the temptations of Jesus on the temptations of Israel, which they experienced during the Exodus. The people of Israel were tempted in the desert as they wandered amidst hardships. Jesus was tempted after fasting in the desert. Jesus responds to the tempter each time by quoting from the book of Deuteronomy. And Matthew attempts to show where Israel failed in their desert testings, Jesus succeeded in overcoming them. The first temptation in Matthew is for Jesus to employ his power to save himself from hunger by changing stones into bread. In their desert wanderings after leaving Egypt, the Israelites demanded that God provide them with food. Jesus, unlike the Israelites, did not demand a sign from God. He didn't ask for bread or food. And sometimes we have uh, scripture interpreters uh, feel that bread or food represented a desire for wealth, prestige, and physical pleasure. In the second temptation, Jesus is encouraged to throw himself down from the parapet of the Jerusalem temple. That would be a drop of about 300 feet into the Kidron Valley and in order that God be compelled uh, to save him and that a strong impression might be made upon the people. Jesus in the Gospels never performs a miracle to benefit himself like changing stones into bread, nor a sensational miracle to impress people. Israel constantly demanded signs from God. And Jesus, unlike Israel, replied that no one has the right to demand a sign from God or put God to the test. The tempter in the third testing of Jesus requests that Jesus pay him homage. That's a favorite word of Matthew throughout his gospel, beginning with the Magi paying homage to Jesus. While Israel worshiped the true God at times, frequently it worshiped false gods as well. The third temptation is really a temptation to put Jesus to the test of establishing the kingdom of God in a manner 
other than that what God or that which God ordained, especially by eliminating the cross in his life. The temptations of Jesus reoccur all throughout his public ministry. They did not disappear after Jesus' retreat in the desert. All throughout his ministry, Jesus encountered real temptations similar to the ones that are dramatized in today's Gospel from Matthew. Jesus was continually tempted to perform a miracle to ben benefit himself, especially to come down from the cross. Any kind of uh, these uh, miracles to benefit himself would do away with suffering. We have at Jesus' crucifixion uh, one of the thieves or insurrectionists calling out, he saved others, let him save himself and us, if he is the Christ of God. The second temptation of putting God to the test reoccurred when unbelievers continually pestered Jesus for more signs. Uh, they wanted Jesus to perform sensational miracles. And Jesus was faced with that temptation to use his power very often. The miracles of Jesus are not primarily displays of power, but are signs of what is taking place interiorly. Jesus only performs miracles to benefit other people, not himself or not to, make, you know, not to impress the crowd. The third temptation of Jesus in Matthew was a call to be a worldly Messiah, for Jesus to establish the kingdom of God without going through his passion and death. Uh, this always would be a temptation present in Jesus throughout his public ministries. His disciples hoped that Jesus would establish the kingdom of God without him suffering nor themselves. The disciples of Jesus in the gospel did not want Jesus to suffer and they wanted to avoid suffering themselves. Jesus resisted this pressure of the crowds and his own disciples to establish a kingdom in a manner ordained by God. Let us pray as we celebrate this liturgy that all of us have the strength to resist the temptations or tests that are present in our own spiritual lives. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. To heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and he has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayer of the Faithful. In this desert time of Lent, we pray for the steadfast spirit that God wants to give to us, speaking now the needs of our community. For all of the sick, the suffering, and the handicapped of the greater Hazleton area, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God might strengthen our religious and political leaders with the steadfastness of spirit that gives them courage and wisdom, we pray to the Lord. Let God create in us the desire to spend time 
with your sacred word, especially during this Lenten season, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will enable those who are ill this day to feel your healing presence within themselves and your helping hands and the generosity of their caregivers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will pour out his mercy on those who need to receive or offer forgiveness, we pray to the Lord. For our faithful departed, especially Teresa Platania from the Mass, is offered today, we pray to the Lord. Please pause to add your own intentions. O oh God, you formed your people in the desert, removing the false identity of slavery and shaping them into a covenant community. Use the desert of our lives to confirm us in our identity as your sons and daughters. We ask this as we always do, through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given human hands and made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, May we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord receive the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name. Good, good as all church. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining 40 long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpents, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one with the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Teresa Platania, from the Masses offered. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, the glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we always may be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The power and the glory are yours now and forever. Glory to Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Christ be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy, I should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
beauty communion song, the Lord will conceal you with his pinions, and under his wings you will trust. Let us pray. Renewed now with the heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.